Here at Equipping Godly Women, I am not shy about the fact that sometimes Christianity is hard. Usually when I talk about things being hard, though, it's mostly kind of the grumbling, complaining, we don't always want to do it God's way. But what about those times when God really does call us to something that is really hard? How do you get through that? How do you stay a good Christian in spite of these really hard things? Well, today I'm talking with Kim Erickson, author of the book, His Last Words, What Jesus Taught and Prayed in His Final Hours. In this interview, Kim is sharing some of her heartbreaking story that honestly had me in tears. She's going to share how she got through it, how she clung to God through it, and just a wealth of encouragement and really practical tips for you to use no matter what hard thing you are going through right now, especially if that is through the loss of a child or a loved one. If this sounds like the kind of encouragement that you could use in your life today, definitely stay tuned because this emotional interview is one that you're not going to want to miss. All right, today we are talking with Kim Erickson, author of the book, His Last Words, What Jesus Taught and Prayed in His Final Hours. Thank you, Kim, so much for agreeing to be here and talk with us today. Thanks for having me. This is great. Well, we actually met a few months ago. We were at a conference together, and at this conference, you were sharing your story about how you lost your son, and that story just really touched me and impacted me of what you had to go through. Can you share with us a little bit um, for our listeners what that was like and that story? Sure, sure. So I kind of have to start at the beginning in order to have the story make sense. So I'll start where, where I was before that happened. I was uh, living in Arizona uh, in the suburbs of Phoenix, and I was an attorney in a big international law firm and had my dream house, and I had my husband, who I'm crazy about, and these two healthy boys. Austin was three and just a wild child, and Ethan was the baby at 15 months, and I really thought I had it all. I was very grateful and I felt very blessed and I really did, you know, just think I had it all. And uh, until April uh, 25th, when I was in my law office, Austin had been sick all week, in and out from the doctor um, with strep throat. And I went to work and the nanny and my husband were taking care of the boys and I was at work on the morning of April 25th when I got that call. Uh, you know, the call every mother fears and nobody wants to get um, that call. And it was the nanny screaming uh, that the ambulance was at our house, Austin, come home. You know, just crying and sobbing, you know, ambulance, Austin, come home. And um, so I, of course, you know, ran out of the office and luckily one of the gals there said, well, you're not going to drive. Uh, so she jumped in my car and we started the drive that is a, about 35 minutes uh, from my downtown office to our home where they said the ambulance was and to come home. And so I'm in the car and I just, I can't even process what's happening. And I'm the, my secretary is driving, you know, 80 miles an hour down the highway to try to get me there. And um, I hate to say this now, but it's the truth is that I didn't even think to pray. And so I tell you that because I want you to know how far away from God I was at that time in my life when I thought I had it all. I was so far away from God that I didn't even think to pray when my three-year-old is being worked on by the medics. I, it didn't occur to me. So I'm in that car, and but what I do want, and what I, what my mother heart is crying out is, I want to be right there. You know, I wanted to be right with Austin. I did not want to be in my car driving 80 miles an hour for the next half hour. I wanted to be right next to him. And so, inside my head, I tilted back the seat in the car, and I just started crying out to Austin, "Can you hear me, Austin? I'm coming." Mommy's coming. Can you hear me? Austin, you fight. And I remember I kept telling him, you fight. 
I'm almost there. Can you hear me? And I kept telling him, stay here with mommy. If you can hear me, stay here. And folks, I have no way to describe what happened next because it just felt like God just put his hand on top of my head. A feeling just washed over me and, and I, everything stopped. And I got overwhelmed by this feeling that I can't describe for you. It was felt wonderful. It was amazing. And I felt this, this just wash over of just love and, and awesomeness. I really can't find the words to describe what I felt all of a sudden. And then deep in my heart, not out loud, but deep in my heart, I heard Austin say, but mom, it's so pretty here. And I knew what he was feeling, at least I thought I did. There I was saying, you know, fight and stay here with mommy. And he said, but mom, it's so pretty here. And he wanted to stay. And it was so awesome the way I felt that I said, okay, okay. And then it was over. And I was back in my car and I looked at the gal sitting next to me and I, she didn't hear a thing. She didn't experience a thing. I didn't know what that was. So I just kept my mouth shut and we drove. But I knew in that moment, heaven is real. If I know nothing else, I knew that Austin was somewhere and it was fabulous. And, um, and I knew he was gone. And so I ended up going to the hospital and not our home. And um, Austin did pass away that morning. Um, and that was horrible and, and it was terrible. But I knew in my heart that heaven was real. And so that morning and that feeling that just washed over me, I had to acknowledge that heaven was real. I knew it. And then I began my search of like, if that was true, like I had gone to a church as, as a child, and, uh, but I didn't believe any of it. I thought it was all hogwash. I was very cynical about it um, and very skeptical about all things church and religion. And, but there I sat and I knew that that part of the story was true. And so I started to wonder what else was true that I heard about God and Jesus. And, and um, you know, later that week, we went to church on a Sunday and the pastor gave uh, the invitation. Like, you've never made Jesus Lord and Savior. You can do that right now. And so just a few days after Austin died, that's, I gave my life to, to Jesus and said, I, you must be real <laughs> because whatever I felt was real. And I know that heaven is real. And so that's my salvation story. That is such a crazy story. I'm totally in tears over here as you're telling this, because as moms, like we never ever want anything to happen to our children. It's, you know, I can't even imagine having to go through that. So my next question for you is how did you go through that? How did you and your family, how did you process that? How did you work through that? What did that look like? Oh, that's a long process, Brittany. <laughs> um, you know, we are a decade out now, and so it looks a lot prettier now. You know, as I sit here and talk with you today, I can tell the story without tears, and I can, I can get through it. But I will tell you that it's a long process. And so, you know, for moms out there who have lost children, you know, they know that they'll just never be the same. And it your life is forever different. That really is true. It really is a loss like no other because I've written it this way recently is that my prayer will never be answered, right? Like the true cry of my heart, my heart's prayer will never be answered because Austin's not coming back here. And really what got me through is that I didn't want him to come back here. I wanted to go there and I still wanna go there and I can't wait uh, to go to heaven. Um, and so what that kind of looks like is always this, um, like a double edged sword, right? Like I really wish he were here, but I am grateful that he is there and he is safe and whole and complete. And he feels that love, that thing that I felt he gets to feel it every day. And, and he is well, and I will see him again. And so that is my anchor that I know the hope of heaven. And I know that I will have all of eternity to have my family um, complete and to see Austin and to be near him. And 
but along the way, Brittany, it was messy. I mean, messy and really gross. And it was just highs and lows because there I was with a new faith. And I was very much a brand new baby Christian, right? With all these questions and all these struggles of just why, why is it so narrow? Like, why is it just Jesus, right? That gets you to heaven. And it wasn't until I started studying my Bible and I really got into a, a church and let other women help me with these questions that I, I now understand it. And I now understand that it's not narrow at all. Jesus wants everybody. Um, but that's, that's the gift that he offers. And, but if you don't take the gift, it's just like a gift here on earth. Like if you don't take the gift, you don't get the gift. <laughs> so you have to take it in. You have to accept it. And so, you know, once you can kind of start to wrap your mind around some of these things, um, you just get overwhelmed with joy. Like you can't believe it. Like you're really going to heaven and you really know the God of the universe. Whoa. And his son. And he came here to save me, little me. Uh, and so it just, that held me out of that ugly pit is this discovery of who God is and who his son is and about the Holy Spirit and my Bible. My Bible really saved me um, from the darkest hours. And when it was so dark and so hard, I would open that Bible and I would read. And God's love for me is woven all the way through it. And so it's going to look different for everybody out there, your struggles. There's everybody has hard stuff. Um, but all the hard stuff gets better when you're close to God. And so that's, that's really the only way to get through, uh, you know, something hard is next to God. So let me ask you this, then you mentioned getting in your Bible and clinging to that to get you through this tough time. What did that actually look like? Did you have um, specific books or Bible studies or resources that you went through? Or was it just getting in your Bible and just reading, you know, starting in Genesis? Or were you looking up specific verses? What did that like? How did you actually use the Bible, practically speaking, to help you during this time? Right. Yeah, that's a great question. I didn't even have one. <laughs> I didn't have a Bible and I didn't have a single book uh, about God or Jesus. Um, and so um, Austin's first nanny who had moved away to have her own kids was a was a, just a sweet Christian gal. And the minute she heard uh, of my moment with Austin and my decision to give my life to Jesus, she said, I've been praying about this. <laughs> and she had a Bible ready and waiting for me. And so I got my first Bible from her. And what changed for me, how it started for me was, was this, is that I had seen the Bible before. Like, I think we had one to record baptisms and weddings or something when I was a kid. Um, and, I, and I had gone to church with my family as a kid. And so I had heard some of these things before. And I, I'm sure that I opened it up at some point somewhere. But it was boring. And I was not interested. And it didn't make any sense either. It was very difficult to read. And so there I sat, had just had this experience that I knew Austin was in heaven. I had just given my life to Christ. Uh, Austin's nanny had given me my first Bible. And next what happened is that the pastor of that church that did Austin's funeral, gosh, they didn't know me. Uh, but the boy, they wrapped their arms around me. And, and he came to our house one night. And my father-in-law said to him, listen, Pastor Steve, you are so good at um you know this preaching and you don't use doesn't look like you have notes or a teleprompter like how do you do that and pastor steve said something that i will never forget and really is at the heart of my healing through my bible he said well when you ask jesus to be your lord and savior you you get the gift of the holy spirit and i remember sitting back <laughs> because did he just say that like the Holy Spirit is going to come to me? Like in my mind, the Holy Spirit was the power of God, like thunder and lightning, the power to create the world. And I shouldn't dare think that I had any of that. Like how would I, did he really say we, I would get the power of the Holy Spirit? Oh my goodness. I, I remember I even crossed my arms and sat back and I was like, what? And then he said this, and I believe 
that the Holy Spirit is what makes the Bible come alive. It's what makes me, helps me understand my Bible. So only with the Holy Spirit can you understand the Word of God. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> we'll see about that because I have a Bible now and we're going to test this. And so I began reading my Bible with this attitude of skepticism and like, what is this all about? I'm not sure I believe all of that. Um, and the pastor's sweet wife told me to start in the Gospel of John. And so she said, don't start in the Old Testament. You want to start in the New Testament. And she said, why don't you even skip a few and start in uh, the Gospel of John? And so that's where I started. And, you know, any of you who have experienced the Holy Spirit out there, you know it's true. You know the Holy Spirit can make you understand things that you have never understood before. You know the Holy Spirit can make things clear. And so it happened to me. I began reading the Bible and going, what? <laughs> how, how can I read this? And it's right there in black and white. The answers to my questions, who God really is. I'm like, he told us, it's right here. How's come nobody told me this before, you know? Um, I was amazed by my Bible. And so I started in the Gospel of John. And the sweet pastor's wife, you guys, I did not even know that she was discipling me. I thought, she's so sweet. We're just having coffee. <laughs> and we'd have coffee. And she'd ask me, you know, how's it going in the Gospel of John? And I would ask my questions. And, you know, I just tore through it. And I was like, what do I do next? And she's like, well, go back and, and start with Matthew. And then just read through the New Testament. And, we'll, you know, maybe we'll talk next week and have another cup of coffee. And so that's where I started. And... Then she gave me a book that is called How to Study Your Bible by Kay Arthur. And um, so that book says you can study the Bible all by yourself. You don't have to be a, a pastor or have a college degree or, uh, you know, go to seminary. Like you can do it. And, and she gives you steps and how to do it. And it, it made some sense to me. And so... Those were my first two books, My uh, Bible and How to Study Your Bible by Kay Arthur. Now, I didn't do all the details that Kay Arthur does, um, but at least it gave me confidence that I could read and understand the Bible and figure it out what's going on and what's happening. Um, and of course, I had some other books come in about grief and grieving. Um, Heaven by Han uh, Randy Alcorn is, is amazing. So if you've never read that, um, John MacArthur has a book called Safe in God's arms about losing a child. Um, and so there were a couple of books like that. So what I think is so interesting is you mentioned how when you started this journey, you had no Bible, no books. And now that you've been through all of this, you actually have your own Bible study that you have written kind of based from this, not based on it, but out of this. Um, can you tell us some more about your Bible study his last words, basically what it's about, who it's for. Uh, yeah, that's an, that's an amazing thing that God did, right? So there I was brand new, and it wasn't too long into that. that I felt God kind of and the Holy Spirit kind of saying, listen, you're a Bible teacher. And I was like, I haven't even read the whole thing yet, you know? Um, and I, I kind of laughed at God, and I, I, I didn't think that was really what was on my heart, but it just kept coming. It was so persistent this feeling in my heart that I was supposed to be a Bible teacher um, just kept coming. And finally I said, okay, fine. Like, what would I write? Like I haven't, I literally hadn't read the whole thing yet. So what, what could you possibly, what could I teach anyone? And God kept directing me in my spirit and my heart to look at the gospel of John again with, with fresh eyes, with my on fire baby Christian enthusiasm. And I started to read and reread the Gospel of John and think, gosh, this is really good stuff. This is powerful. And then it kept kind of narrowing. And, and I started to think, I got to chapter 13, and I read 13 through 17 kind of over and over again. And it finally hit me. Like, this is Jesus' moment, right? He knows he's about to die. Chapter 13 starts with the washing of the feet. And so this is his time in the upper room right before his uh, arrest and crucifixion. And it occurs to me that this is his night before. Like, I remember the night before I lost Austin. I remember exactly what he was wearing. 
uh, what sheets were on his bed, what book we read, what stuffed animal he chose um, for sleeping that night. I remember every little detail about the night before Austin died. And it occurred to me like, oh my goodness, these chapters is the disciples moment. These are the moments the people that were closest to Jesus would remember forever. They would know the sights, the sounds, what he wore, where he was standing when he spoke. Like they would remember everything about these chapters. And so that's how I uh, kind of narrowed in on uh, in the Gospel of John, chapters 13 through 17. And, um, and so that's a Bible study. You'll walk through uh, chapters 13 through 17, kind of line by line, and look at each verse and, and just ask yourself, what does this tell me about God? That's what I want you to get out of a Bible study from me is learn something more about God. And for this one, it's the character of God, like at the heart of who he is, of course, that's what Jesus talked about in his last moments with his disciples. And it's, it's just so powerful uh, to read it line by line and verse by verse and really dig in to what's at Jesus' heart. Like the, he knows, right? He knows he's going to die. And this is his last moments with his disciples. And so what did he, what did he say? Um, to them and that must have been important to him. So now I'm super curious for those of us who have not read John in a minute What were Jesus's last words? Do you remember? Well, they're so so It really is 13 through 17 are almost all if you have one of those Bibles that writes uh, Jesus when he speaks in red uh, 13 through 17 are all Jesus talking. I mean John does very little um, through these chapters, but Probably the most important thing that he said over and over and over again during that time is love one another, love one another, and that he is the son promised from the father and that we were chosen as his gift from the father to the son. And so to know that you are chosen, you are loved by God, and then love other people, like that's, that's it. I was so blown away by the simplicity of what God wants of me. He doesn't want a lot of things. He just wants me to believe that he's the son of God, that he came here to save me, that he chose me, and that he loves me and he wants me to love other people. I mean, it really, it's so beautiful uh, how simple it is. And so I would say that his last words are that he loves you, he wants you to love him, and then love other people. Yeah, I love that. That's beautiful. So for any of our listeners who are going through a really rough time right now, whether that's they've lost a child or anything that's going on in their life where they really need to cling to God to get through it, do you have any advice for how we get through really tough times? I would say you need the time alone. I would encourage you to make sure that you get some solitude. You've, you've got to be honest before God. For me, I didn't like to fall apart in front of my husband or my son. Like I didn't, I, and women, I think we're like that. Like we like to help, we want to help others, but we, we don't, we don't need any help, right? Like I don't like to accept help. That's not a real strength of mine. Um, and so if you're going through hard times, I would just encourage you to get, get alone and be honest before God. And if that means stomping your feet, kicking and screaming and shaking your fist at God, that's okay. He understands it. You've got to get that out. You've got to be able to say, I am mad about this. I am crushed by this. And ask for his help. Ask him to show himself to you. Ask him to make his comfort tangible, you know, that you can just be overpowered um, by his comfort or his peace. Or Lord, you're going to have to fill me up with joy today because I don't have it. And today I'm mad and God will do that. He will listen to you. He will respond to you. He will help you. Um, and so I just encourage you. I think a lot of women hold it in and try to hold it together. Um, in fact, my mom once told me um, when I said something like, God and I are going to have to have a talk about this. <laughs> um, my brother uh, got uh, terminal brain cancer and um, passed away last year. And I remember telling my mom when the cancer came back that, uh-uh. 
me and God are going to have to have this out. And she was like, oh, do you, that's, that's not very respectful. You know, that's not very reverent. I mean, are you sure you should be so disrespectful to, to God? And I was like, oh, no, we are tight. <laughs> like, we, God knows me. He knows I'm already mad. Like, I'm not hiding anything from him. And so um, I would just encourage you to be, be more raw with God and, and let him take those things from you because that's what he wants to do. He wants to take those things from you. And he wants to walk beside you in these difficult times. So that takes time. It, it takes you being alone by yourself with God. And uh, for me, I would bring my Bible and maybe a devotional because it just helps me focus and not just spin my wheels so much. But um, you can use praise music. Let the music say what you don't feel like saying today. Um, you know, let the music uh, worship God because you don't feel like it today. <laughs> um, and somehow God uses those things to, to lift you up. And I would also say to ask somebody to pray for you when you don't feel like you can pray um, because it's just so hard. You know, ask a couple people like today is a tough day and I need some prayer and have people do that for you. So I would say solitude, prayer, um, praise music, your Bible, a devotional, a book, um, but mostly just let it out. Let it let God have it. He can he can take it. So let me ask you, you say if, that we should surround ourselves with people who can pray for us. How do we find those people in our lives? I know some of us are blessed enough to have really good godly friends and family, but for somebody who maybe doesn't, maybe the people around them aren't Christian or they just don't feel like they can trust them to really be real and honest, how do you find those relationships? I would say try to find a good church. You know, I was lucky enough to just have that one right there who swooped their arms around me, but we've moved since then. And then we moved again. And you have to find a church that you feel comfortable in. And it doesn't mean the churches you try are bad churches. They're just not a good fit for you and what you're looking for. So I would say if you feel like you don't know people who could pray for you, um, there's a few things you can do. Start you know, searching some churches online. And if one looks interesting, go on a Sunday and, and try it out and, you know, and then try a different one and, and ask God to lead you to a church that, that he would like you to be at. Um, second, there are a bunch of um, Christian radio stations. Start by listening to one of those. One is Caleb or The Promise or The Joy. And you probably have a local station that you could you could listen to and almost all of them have a website that has prayer requests. And, um, and so you could, you could just send an email and say, please, will, will someone please pray for this uh, with me? And they will. So tell me some more. I know you have a new book that is coming out soon. Um, can you tell me about that? Yeah, that, um, that was a tough one to write. It is called uh, Sorrow and Survival, and it's directly to a mom who's lost a child. And the hope is to, to help her along with some really practical things, like how do I even get through the grocery store without losing it? You know, um, what do I say when people ask me how many kids do I have? It, there's so many practical things, like what do I do with this stuff? When, do I have to get, get rid of it? Do I give it away? Do I keep it all? Do I, I don't know what to do. Uh, and no one's really willing to tell you what to do. They're scared right now, right? They're scared for you. They don't want to do anything that would hurt your feelings. And so my prayer is that this book would be really practical. Yeah, that sounds so good and so helpful. I don't even know like the answers to that question. I'm like, I'm glad you're writing a book on this because I would not even know where to start with that. Um, but as we finish up today, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners? Anything else that they should know or that you want to leave them with? Well, I would love for them to feel more loved by God today. Like that, I just didn't understand it. I didn't understand that God loved me so much. And so whenever I write or speak, I, I want people to know that how much God loves you. It's crazy. Like you can't, you can't put words on it and you can't imagine it. Even if you can't feel it right now, it's true. Just because you don't feel it doesn't mean it's not true. Uh, and the other thing uh, would be, for them to just take one step today, one step towards God, whatever that might be, whether it's just looking up a church or 
picking up that Bible or calling a friend who they know believes in God, I would just encourage them uh, to understand more about God and find ways to do that. There's a whole bunch of ways to do that. But I would encourage you to dig in and try to figure out who God really is. Because when you do that, you'll really see how much he loves you and cherishes you and that he keeps his promises. And so probably people ask me sometimes, like, oh, what's the most surprising thing you learned when you studied your Bible? And my thing is that God always keeps his promises. Always. Like when he said something in the Old Testament, then he did it. And if he said it, then he did it. And he, you'll find that pattern over and over again throughout the Bible that if God says it, he's going to do it. And you know what, my friend, what God said? He's going to fix this messy world. This is a broken world. And he has said to us that he's going to fix it. And someday there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And it will be for all eternity with no death, no crying, no pain. It will be perfection. And he has said it. And I know he's going to do it. And so I would let you... Uh, leave with that thought like God always keeps his promises and one of those promises is he's going to fix this broken world someday and we're going to be there just to watch him do it and so please know that at the bottom of your heart that God loves you and that he's going to fix this and uh and just cling to that when times are tough well, Kim, thank you so much for agreeing to come on this podcast with me today. You literally had me laughing, crying, encouraged all of it. Um, and I hope that our readers and listeners are feeling the exact same way too. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, so that about wraps up our interview for today. If this really resonated with you and you'd like to hear more from Kim, definitely be sure to check out her Bible study, His Last Words, what Jesus taught and prayed in his final hours. And then if you would love to hear more interviews from really awesome godly women who can show you what it looks like to walk out all different aspects of this godly Christian life, definitely make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. I come back every week to bring you new videos, new inspiration, new encouragement, and new super practical tips to help you be absolutely all in in faith and family. And I really hope that you will join us. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button now, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.